So, choking happens, accidents happen, kids run into things, they cut themselves. What do you do next? Do you call 999? Do you deal with it, with it yourself? Do you fall apart? It's, it's a tough one, isn't it? It's really, really hard. And um, I think it's always amazing how something kicks in when you're yeah. in that emergency situation. I have stayed so calm. Um, in For other people's kids. <laughs> yeah, but even in my own, you know, with my own, I can remember actually I got unfortunately so used to calling the paramedics out um, that I had got a plan. I knew what what the system was. I had to yeah. carry um, whichever child it was that wasn't breathing down the stairs. I had to make yeah. sure that the front door was open. I could do all of that whilst being on the phone. Um, so I would have called 999, which is the first thing you do when the baby's not breathing. And then you need to get the front door open. Mm. You need to get the baby in a safe position. The front door needs to be open. The paramedics can't get through the front yeah. door if you're upstairs with your baby. And if you're on your own, that's quite a difficult one because, you know, with guy travelling yeah. a lot, you know, you've had to deal with that many times. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with the febrile seizures, the, the reflux and things like yeah. that. It's, it's massively panicking. I mean, I remember finding Rocco once when he had had a, a febrile seizure, but it was a busy day, we were having a barbecue here, and it was just one of those things. He'd, and I felt myself really about, about to freak, even though I knew the place was it's filled really, with people. Really um, and I remember my heart beating, bearing in mind this isn't my child, and fe feeling that, that shakiness. So for it to be your own kid, it's really That's tough. Really, really and it's hard. tough being on the phone to somebody and talking and not crying on the phone. Because I think you deal with something in an mm. emergency situation, like I said, that kind of weird thing kicks in and you have to save a life. Mm. You're the only person who can save this child's life. I can remember sucking foam out of Rocco's mouth and you just do anything yeah. and you do go into automatic. But it's that moment where you have to phone someone else and explain what's going on and that's quite often the moment where you yeah. really wobble um, and yeah and they're asking what's going on that's the moment where you say my son's not yeah, breathing yeah. he's gone blue it's almost really the point where, where you say it out loud and that's where you start to crumble yeah it's really yeah. really tough and then them talking you through everything as well, asking you to, once you phone 999, they will ask you to mm. check all these things um, because they need to establish what's They've going on They've got to tick list, not just possible. Yeah. And they're relaying the information that you're giving them over the phone to the paramedics who hopefully will be already dispatched. Mm. Um, and for me, I, I'm so, so, so grateful for those paramedics that came to me time and time, time again. again. Um, and I think it's really important to remember, you know, never be scared to call 999. You know, a paramedic's not going to turn up and say, you've just wasted our time. If you think something's wrong, and that is your instinct, that something really, you're, you're in trouble, the kid's in trouble, you call them. There's, just I don't spend, worry. I know. apologise to every paramedic who walked through <laughs> the door, partly because that's the kind of thing that I do. Yeah. I felt awful because I felt like I should be able to deal with this. Once I had seen my child turn blue and not breathe three mm -hmm. times, you kind of think, I, I know this is going to be okay, I, I yeah. should be able to deal with this now. I know I need to get his temperature down, I know what I should be doing, I've seen the paediatric doctors and I should be coping with this. And yeah. I'd say that to the paramedics and they kept saying, you are doing the right thing, this is fine, yeah. we're taking you into hospital, your baby needs to be checked. I was never, ever, ever made to feel wrong for yeah. asking people to come and help me that knew what they were doing. And you know, there's there's times when yes, you will feel silly that you that you went to the hospital. I I've gone through that where Tilda fell down the stairs and she fell she fell pretty badly, and Fred managed to catch her at the bottom. She she started crawling up the stairs and it was one of those moments of oh Fred, quick she she's going up the stairs and him kind of going to chase after her made her go quicker, thinking it was a game. In a full onesie, slipped on the top step. Bang, 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 bang. Nearly whacked her head at the bottom. And we were okay. Okay, she's fine, she's fine. But then she was sitting there and she was holding her arm. We just went, oh, you know, has she broken her arm? Mm. What do we do? We're going to have to take her to the hospital. We've got to. Simple as that. And 
we got to the hospital and what happens? Suddenly she's absolutely right, fine, <laughs> she's running around by the time the doctor came to see us and again he just said do not worry, you no, did exactly the right thing. What if we hadn't gone because we thought oh she's fine and there'd been a fracture and then and then trying to explain that later, why didn't we go? Because you know, is, We are so lucky in our country yeah. that you don't have to pay for this directly every time and with yes. the, the 111 service mm. is amazing as well we've both oh, used NHS that direct, yeah. when you do not know whether you should be calling this an emergency yeah. or not and with the boys i can't tell you how many trampoline accidents <laughs> skateboard accidents cycling accidents yeah. we have it's like part of my daily mm. routine to be wondering whether these kids are going to smash their teeth or that was another one we've had. Yeah. Um, Lego up the nose. <laughs> it's A and E when Ozzy pushed Lego up his nose. But now you can call 111 yeah. and feel like someone who knows what they're doing is telling you whether you should be panicking about exactly. this or well, not. We called, we called for Ivy the other last week because she's been consistently sick recently and you know to the point where we were like this is not okay what is going on and so we did talk it through with um, NHS Direct and they went through the tick list is there a rash has she got a temperature is she mottled on her skin is she dozy all of those things and they were all nose to that and um, we have got to the bottom of it and you know it was just her, her tummy the being, being <laughs> in balance um, but you know she'd had a, a, a tummy bug that had just you know upset her her gut and thankfully that's all it looks like it's been but you know you, you've, you've got to just yeah. find out and never be worried about asking somebody you know a professional mm. for help definitely definitely uh, and sometimes you know it's something that you you don't need you know you can sort sort it out at home you know we've had the choking situation with Tilda and I did lose it I, I was trying to do what I was supposed to do I had been on a first aid course I knew what I was doing I knew I needed to get her over my lap and I had to hit her hard but I don't think I was hitting her hard enough or it was it was a bit of sausage the skin was down her throat hitting so it, a kid it, on the back oh, is a, a really scary tough thing, thing to do and you actually have to hit them pretty hard I go in for yeah. that stick your finger down the throat scoop it out I've done that Which you're not Friends supposed to do, kids. but we did. We what? had. To, I know it did me. work. It did happen. But again, you know, it's one of those choking. That's kids. what Nina did in the end, wasn't it? She got yeah. underneath because Tilda was over that way and managed to just hook it out. Mm. They say if you can see it easily, you know, I think you can. Yeah. You can just get it out, but you've got. You run the risk of pushing it in further. So and you are sticking there something else panic. in their throat as well. At yeah, the same exactly. Time. So it is easy to lose it. And I could feel myself getting to that point where I, because it wasn't working. I was panicking and as soon as you panic that's when all your your rational thought can go out the window and if you've just had yeah. no training as well yeah. you know get in the people that have had the training and don't feel bad about it i've i've been on my own with three children mm. in the house and one of them is not breathing and is going blue from lack of oxygen i can't deal with that yeah. on my own i'm sorry i do i'm not you trained need to deal with that on my own and with all the best will in the world to get out the other side of that and be able to say that I dealt with it, I can't. And, yeah. you know, I am eternally grateful for the help and support that I've had. And it's not easy. It's frightening. And the logistics as well. We were talking earlier about you, you can't take... Um, other children in the ambulance with you as yeah. well. There's so much to do. Three o'clock in the morning, you've got a child who needs to get into hospital quick. You're breastfeeding one baby and there's one child asleep yeah. in his bed upstairs. How do you cope with that? It's it's tough, especially when there's not someone on the end of the phone. Yeah. Luckily, <laughs> luckily, um, I've had Katie a few times when I've needed her, and um, it's it's really really tough. Mm. And it's a horrible moment when you're sitting in that ambulance, making your way to hospital, and you've got your kids sat there with an oxygen mask yeah. on, and the you've got they the so sound tiny as well. of the siren yeah. it's it's really tough and the only thing that i could ask you to do is if you've been in that emergency situation especially if it's repeated like mm. i went through over and over again however strong you are at the time and i was told over and over that i was amazing for dealing what i was dealing with on my own it has an effect and it might not be immediate mm. but 
consider talking it through because I think it's, it's a form of post-traumatic stress disorder mm. and or syndrome and you know you that's something that you've definitely had to readdress further yeah. down the line you know us as and as friends we saw you know the change in her and eventually we're able to say okay hang on you've gone from here to here and it is slow we had we didn't notice straight away and it was all a build up of her postnatal depression and that it was a massive part of it i'm sure it was and i know it's you really think so tough. too yeah when i look back yeah. at rocco had i watched my son mm. have fits 17 times that's going to have an impact on yeah. me as a mum it's horrific and then diggery, not breathing with reflux and having to go through tests. That's gonna have yeah. some effect. So, and I wish so much that I had gone for counseling at the time. Yeah. So please, if you're going through these 999 emergency trauma experiences, don't forget it has a big effect on mummy and daddy too. Yeah. And it's worth talking that through before you end up in a mess. Yeah. I think that's a really, really important message. So uh, let us know if you've ever had to go through anything like this and did you do anything about it for yourself as well? Um, and if not, as Anna says, please, please, you know, maybe go and get a, a little bit of counselling, talk to your GP and see if there's any way you can get referred. And mm. yeah. Even if you feel okay at the time. Yeah. Well, leave us any comments and we'll see you on the next video from Hey Mummy. Bye.